Hello! Okay, so this video is going to be a little different. It's not a makeup tutorial. I'm just going to be sitting here talking to you guys about my plastic surgery and procedures I've had done, I guess. Um, I get a lot of questions about this, so I decided to just film a YouTube video answering all those questions. I took all the DMs and all the questions that I've gotten and I put them together and I made some notes and I am gonna sit here and talk to you guys about some cosmetic procedures that I've had done. So anyways, first things first. Do I have my lips done? Yes, I do. So I've gotten my lips done I think four times now in my life. I've only had my lips done four different times and I started getting my lips done back in 2016 I think was the first time I got my lips done. So I've always had pretty full lips. Here's a photo of me from when I was younger I believe I was like 17 here so I didn't start getting my lips done until I was like 25 um I'm 27 now <laughs> I've been 27 for like 15 days and it sucks because I don't want to be 27 but I am in my old age I feel like my lips have gotten a little bit thinner they're not as plump as they used to be so everyone has been getting their lips done and they look good and I was like what the hell I'm gonna try it and I actually love it okay um yeah, I'm one of those. I still overline my lips, but it just gives me a little bit of confidence. I'm a grown-ass woman, so I can get my lips done. I know I sound a little defensive, but there's so many freaking haters out there, like, so it just makes me a little defensive. But my thoughts on that are like, who the fuck cares? Does it affect you if I get my lips done? No, it doesn't. So don't be so freaking judgmental of other people. But anyways, the first time I ever got my lips done, I got them done at Flawless Laser Center because that was, like, the popular place to go. And I really liked them. Um, this is a picture of me the first time I ever got my lips done, and I really liked my lips. Okay, I look like shit right now because I'm not in my studio lighting. Wow, I look like shit. There's my unmade bed in the back. But as I'm editing this video, I'm realizing that I forgot to mention that the very first time I got my lips done, we put most of the syringe in my bottom lip. And now I put most of the syringe in my top lip. So in this photo that I just showed you, my bottom lip was really big and I don't really like that look. I like when my top lip looks fuller because my bottom lip is already naturally full. So I just want to mention that. I liked my nurse. I liked everything about it. The only reason I don't go back there is because it's so far from me. It's in Burbank and I live in Orange County and just it was like a mission to go there. It was like an all day thing. So I found someone closer. And the lady I go to now is Joanna the nurse also because she's another popular injector or cosmetic nurse. I don't know what her specific title is. She has like so many before and after pictures on her Instagram of all her work and it's all beautiful. It all looks good. It doesn't look crazy ridiculous. It just, I love her style or whatever if that's a thing. So I went to her and I freaking love my lips so I've gone to her the last three times that I've got my lips done and I've really been in love with my results. So a lot of people ask me how much it is. I think it varies from like five to six hundred in between there. I'm not exactly sure. I think it depends on what kind of filler you get because there's different types. The first time I ever got my lips done I got Juvederm Ultra something. I'm not exactly sure, but I got the one that would like make my lips look the biggest and I liked it But I heard that Juvederm gives more of a ducky look which I did feel like my lips looked a little more ducky Versus like naturally plump. I don't know. Maybe it's just me I liked the Juvederm, but when I went to Joanna She suggested that I get Restylane and I got that and I really really loved the way my lips looked when she put the Restylane in so I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. You'd have to ask them. I get Restylane now and I love it. I feel like my lips like don't look too crazy. I don't know. I feel like they just look good. And so I really like the Restylane so that's what I've been getting. And this last time that I went to Joanna, I think she gave me Restylane Define or something because I didn't have like the normal Restylane that I normally get. And I think she said that the Restylane Define is like for smile lines and stuff. But she said she did it on her own lips and her lips look perfect. So I was like, okay, let's just do that one. And I guess supposedly it'll last a little longer, but it 
it was a little more pricey. Yeah, but I love them. They're smooth, um, no bumps or lumps or anything, and I feel like they look great. So I'm hoping they last a little bit longer because on me, I feel like the filler dissolves pretty quick. I noticed that like after three to four months, like I need like another syringe. Unless I'm just like losing touch with reality, <laughs> which I told my mom when I got my lips done the first time. I'm like, please don't let me like lose touch with reality. Like if my lips start looking crazy, crazy like please tell me the honest truth because I don't want to look crazy or ridiculous I don't want to end up with like body dysmorphia or something but um I feel like they look good and I'm so freaking happy with the way my lips look does it hurt no I don't think getting your lips hurts necessarily they do numb you so every time I've got my lips done they always put a numbing cream on my lips and the actual like injection itself doesn't hurt like at all you can't even really feel it I feel like the most painful part is like the day after the couple days after getting your lips done because your lips are just so tight and like swollen and sometimes bruised and you don't have numbing stuff anymore because it wears off so I feel like the couple days after your lips are pretty sore but it's not unbearable it's fine I have a couple girlfriends that have been getting their lips done for years and they get their lips done like all the time and my one friend was like oh girl I don't even have time for the numbing cream anymore she's like I just go in there and do it without the numbing cream I am too chicken to do that, so props to her, but um, I do know some girls that like are okay without any numbing cream, but I'm always going to get numbing cream because I'm too, way too chicken to do it without any numbing cream. Healing process, so during the healing process, okay, so the first time I ever got my lips done, I looked ridiculous the next day, like the day after getting my lips done, I looked crazy, like I was bruised and my lips just looked like I had some kind of like allergic reaction. I just looked crazy. My lips are huge. I was like, oh my god, what did I do? I look so ugly. But that's normal. It's normal to be bruised. It's normal to be swollen. It's totally normal. Don't freak out. Just wait like a week or two. The swelling will go down. The bruises will go away. And your lips will be beautiful. And you'll love it. And then you'll probably be addicted like everybody else I know. That was a little scary at first. But you know, the second time I did it, the third time, and the fourth time that I did it, I was like, okay, this is normal. I'm not worried. And I honestly feel like the more more I did it, the less swollen I was. Or maybe it's just because I was already used to it and I knew what to expect, so it wasn't like as shocking as it was the first time, but I don't know. Also, I remember I... I did something I'm not supposed to do. You're supposed to stop drinking a couple days before you get your lips done because the alcohol can thin your blood. If you drink before your procedure, like the night before, or the day before, or whatever, you'll bruise really bad. So I drank one time the day before, the night before I got my lips done, and the next day, my after getting my lips injected, they were so freaking bruised. Like I was bruised like up here and like down here. It was bad. I was like really, really bruised, but it went away. It was fine. I think I bled a little more than usual too, which is because alcohol thins your blood. Uh, don't drink before you get your lips done because you'll have way more bruising. And the last couple times I've gotten my lips done, I haven't drank in before. I've been really cautious and careful, you know, that I do everything correctly and follow directions and do everything the right way. So I don't drink days before. I hardly drink anyways, but I didn't drink days before I got my lips done and literally no bruising, like very minimal swelling it was great but all the times I've got my lips done they always heal and the swelling goes down and the bruising goes away and my lips look great how long does it last it lasts me personally like three to six months and then I feel like the filler dissolves and it's time to get you know a touch-up or another syringe but I do feel like the more I've done it the longer it lasts so I don't know if my body like gets used to it I don't, maybe my metabolism is slowing down or maybe just the filler is like building up in my lips I'm not too sure like I said, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know really what goes on, but I personally feel like the more I get my lips done, the longer it's been lasting. So in the beginning, like my first syringe, I felt like dissolved within like three months. I also do have a very high metabolism though, and I heard that your metabolism, your lifestyle, whether you work out a lot or not, comes into play with injections. Like people with a higher or faster metabolism, their body tends to dissolve the filler faster, so maybe that's true. 
don't know. Okay, so my lips before filler. Um, my lips before filler, like I said, they've always been fairly full. I never had like super thin lips. My bottom lip, this is pretty much like my natural bottom lip. We, when we do my lips, we put a little bit here in the side. This, like, middle part of my bottom lip has always been very full. Like, this is me in high school, and trust me, I was not getting my lips done in high school. I wasn't allowed to. I didn't even think about it. Nobody was doing it at that time, except for, like, older women. And my mom would have never let me get my lips done in high school. And we didn't have the money to get my lips done in high school either. But my list of four injections, you know, always fairly on the fuller side, but not, like, super big. But my top lip is kind of thinning out as I get older. Like, with age, my top lip has been getting thinner, and I didn't like that. I always overline my cupid's bow area, like, a lot. And I don't know, I just got tired of overlining my lips. I just thought like, wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to overline my lips so much? And I don't overline my lips as much as I used to. I still overline my lips a little bit, especially in my cubits bow area, but basically I just overline my lips now to like give them like a perfect shape. I don't like do it so much for like fullness anymore. But overlining your lips too much can look a little ridiculous on me anyways, so that's part of the reason why I started getting my lips done. Just, I don't know, just to feel better about myself. So, do you regret getting your lips done? Not at all. I love my lip filler. Will you continue to get your lips done? Yes. I, as long as I can afford to, and as long as I don't, like, lose touch with reality and start looking all crazy, I will definitely continue to get my lips done. Unless something happens and I start having, like, allergic reactions or something crazy. Um, what are your concerns? So, I don't really have any concerns. I just don't want to, again, like, lose touch with reality. At this point, I don't feel like I'm going to, but, you know, there's there's always the possibility, I guess. <laughs> Have you gotten rhinoplasty? Your nose is perfect. No, I've never gotten my nose done, but I have gotten a little bit of filler in my nose. I don't have a nose job necessarily, but actually the last time I got my lips done with Joanna, I got two syringes, one full one for my lips, and then I was like, hey, like, let's put some in my nose, because I wanted, like, a more, like, upturned nose, and she also suggested that I put it up here at, the, like, the top of the bridge of my nose, because it kind of dipped a little bit, and I just wanted my nose to be, like, a little more perky, but really, this is, like, my natural nose. I feel like it made very minimal change but enough to like make me feel better enough for me to notice I'm pretty happy with my nose in general but we did put a little bit of filler just right up here and then a little in the tip of my nose just to make it more like cute <laughs> And I'll put a before and after picture here of my nose, as well as my chin, if you notice. We did put a little bit in my chin, and then I, like I said, also got my lips done that day. I did get a little bit of filler in my nose. I don't even think we did, like, a half a syringe. Maybe we did a half syringe, but, like, we barely put anything in my nose. It didn't hurt. I felt like afterwards it was a little tender here, but honestly, it wasn't bad at all. Will I do it again? Um, maybe. I feel like I would probably put it here again. I don't know if I would put any more in the tip of my nose because the tip of my nose is already kind of like big. Bulbous. Is that the right word? I don't know. But I feel like the tip of my nose is like kind of big. So like adding any more filler there is like, ugh. Like I don't want like a freaking Rudolph nose or something. So I don't know if I would put it in the tip of my nose again, but probably would put it here just to straighten out that bridge a little bit. I don't think I would ever get a rhinoplasty. I'm not that committed. My nose is fine. So no, I don't have a nose job. Maybe if you want to call it a liquid nose job you can, but I've never had like surgery on my nose. I don't know how much this syringe was. I want to say it was like six or seven hundred for my nose, but like I said, we only use like half of it and then we put the rest in my chin. So moving on. I've also had my chin filled just a little bit. I have the weakest fucking chin in the world. Like I hardly have a chin, you guys. Like look at it so dinky and tiny. I have the weakest chin. It just runs in my family. It's something that I'm a little insecure about because I feel like my side profile is kind of weak. It's like not that good. Um, it's not horrible, but it's just kind of like eh. So I got my chin filled like six months ago 
ago from Dr. Mills in Laguna Beach and he put a full syringe of Juvederm something in my chin and then when I went to Joanna last month we did my lips we did my nose and then the syringe that we put in my nose we took the other half of it and put it in my chin just to give my chin a little bit more oomph because it needed it so here's that before and after again you can see my chin and my nose and my lips it just enhanced my side profile just a little bit and I would probably continue to do my chin because I do think it looks better it just makes my side profile look better and it's such a small enhancement like I don't think you could ever ever guess that I've ever had my chin done until I tell you like you would never know that until I tell you you so now you know okay moving on so I've never had Botox no I do kind of want to get Botox but I'm not like like in a hurry to get it it's just something that I'd like to try one day I want to get like because I have hooded eyes so in pictures this is me like relax my face look how hooded and heavy my eyes look I just have heavy eyelids it also runs in my family my mom and my grandfather have heavy eyelids so when I model or when I take selfies like I'm always like cautious that I like open my eyes otherwise my eyes will look like heavy and tired so I kind of would like to get like a brow lift you know like with Botox also like from doing this all the time like my forehead's getting a little wrinkly but I'm also afraid that I like wouldn't be able to like move my forehead my friend said that she got Botox and like couldn't move her forehead at all for like six months and she said it was hard to do her makeup and like that kind of scares me so I don't know um I'll probably try Botox like once in my life but who knows I'll probably love it but um never had it so we'll see I would like I said like to like I need to look more awake so that's it for like fillers and injections that's all I've had done that's all um <laughs> as far as cosmetic surgeries I've only had one and the surgery that I had is breast augmentation I have had my boobs done I'm not going to show you my tits right now but um here's a before photo of my boobs this is my boobs pre-baby. So this is like fresh, young, cute girl boobs. And then I had a baby and my boobs turned to nothing. And so I was like 19 with like no boobs. And I was just, actually I had post breastfeeding boobs. And I was just like, there is no way I'm going to go through my 20s with these boobs. No way. Um, I love my boobs. They've done great things. Like keep a baby alive for a whole entire year. Solid. Um. Um, but I wanted nicer, bigger, fuller boobs. So I got my boobs done when I was 20, I think. I think I was 20 when I got my boobs done. And that was back in 2012. And wow, it's been like six years. So I've had my boobs done. And this is my boobs <laughs> now. Um, I freaking love it so much. So I got um, saline implants, 450 cc's, both sides. Um, that made me a full double D. Victoria's Secret says I'm a triple D, but I wear a double D bra and I fill it out all the way. I paid like $3,300 and I went to Dr. Doan in Huntington Beach. I'm so happy with my boobs. He did a great job. Um, I felt like they were very inexpensive because you know, they can be upwards of like $20,000, maybe more, depending on who and where you go to. But I paid $3,300. Um, I paid for my own boobs, by the way. Nobody bought my fucking boobs. I bought my own boobs, and they're all mine, 100%, and I'm proud of that. They still look great. They do ripple a little um, when I like bend over, like the side will ripple, but I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all, and they still look great. All the time so yeah a little backstory on my boobs before I got pregnant before I had a baby before I breastfed my boobs were a full B and I loved them they were perfect I never thought about getting a boob job then but then I got pregnant at 18 had my daughter at 19 and I breastfed for a year solid and when I breastfed when my milk came in ladies if you've done this you know um, when my milk came in my boobs were so engorged I went from a B to like a double D my boobs looked fake when they were filled with milk and then through breastfeeding your boobs kind of like fluctuate like if you're engorged or if you're not like so they're kind of fluctuating a little bit and I breastfed for a year solid so breastfeeding also makes you lose a lot of weight or it did for me anyways by the time I was done breastfeeding I've always been like a hundred a hundred and ten pounds but by the time I was done breastfeeding, I was like 80 pounds. I was so fucking skinny. I still ate. I was just, breastfeeding just sucks the life out of you, literally. So I was like 80 pounds and my boobs were like 
an A cup. But it wasn't like a cute A cup. It was like a used up, beat up old A cup. It was so sad. Just picture a sandwich baggie with a golf ball in it. That was my boobs after breastfeeding. And I was 19. So like I said, I was like, there's no fucking way I'm going to go through my 20s with these boobs. Like I said, I love my boobs. My boobs did amazing things. I kept a human alive solely on breast milk. Like, I'm proud of that. That is an accomplishment. But I still didn't want to have ugly boobs. So, got my money together, bought myself my boobs, and now I have a boob job. And I love them. But I want to get them redone. I was like in such a rush in such a hurry to get my boobs done that I didn't like, I don't know, I just went to the first person that I could afford who I thought had good work and who I liked because I had a couple consultations before I got them done. But I wish that I would have gotten a different shape. I'm okay with saline, I don't mind saline, but I wish I would have gotten like a teardrop shape just because I feel like my boobs look too like meh, like too round, too like porn star looking and I'm still very thin, I'm 100 pounds and I feel like my chest is pretty thin so I feel like like you can see just like round implants on my flat chest like I just think it would look better if they had a little more like droop to them or something. But I still love them. I'm so happy with them. I still think they look good. They look good with or without a bra and I'm not in a hurry to get them redone but I would eventually one day like to get them redone. Probably stay the same size. I think I would look top heavy if they were any bigger. Definitely would get a different shape. Um, I don't regret getting my boobs done but if I didn't need a boob job I wouldn't have ever done it. Like if my boobs didn't suffer the way they suffered after breastfeeding, I, you know, if they would have stayed looking like they did pre-baby, I would have never got my boobs done. Um, I don't really regret it, but I do think it sucks because there's like cute tops that I want to wear that look really good on like a smaller chested girl, but I just look like an exotic dancer in like some tops that, you know, my boobs are just too big for some tops and I do think that sucks. I wish that they stayed looking cute and fresh but they didn't. Um, surgery was a breeze. It was a breeze. I, from what I remember, I went into the operating room. They tied my arms down on this table and they put a IV on me and then I started feeling weird and I was like, why do I feel funny? And they're like, oh, we put in the anesthesia or whatever in your IV. Start thinking about happy things. And I was like, oh geez, like thanks for telling me. But then I just went to sleep and then it felt like I woke up a minute later and I was like, oh, do we do it yet? And she's like, yeah, you're done. Just like that, it was over and done with. I got my incision under the boob. I didn't want to go through my nipple because I have um, the tendency to keloid. Is that the right word? I have the tendency to get keloid scars or however you say it. But those like big, thick, raised scars, I get. So I didn't want to have like big, thick scars like on my nipple. I also didn't want to fuck with my nipple. I just didn't want any scars on my nipple. So I went under the boob. You can see my scars a little bit. Maybe I'll show you. I have like a... As you can see, my scars did keloid a little bit, but they did go down. See? So you really can't even see my scars at all unless you're like looking for them or unless I point them out. So they don't really bother me. They are bigger than like some friends that I have who've gotten their boobs done. Their scars are like almost uh, non-visible, but mine, my skin just scars weird. I don't know why, but that's why I went under the boob. I feel like the healing process, it was many years ago, but from what I remember, it was not bad. They prescribed me... Norco's and Lortab and I didn't even take it because Norco's, Lortab, Vicodin all makes me sick. The pain just wasn't even that bad that I didn't even take my, I think I took it like the first day I took a Norco but it makes me so nauseous that I didn't want to take it so I was fine. I don't remember having a lot of pain. I remember feeling like a lot of pressure on my chest at first but it wasn't anything unbearable from what I recall and I had a great 
post-op, I guess. I had a great healing experience from my boob job. I don't remember anything that was like crazy. I don't remember it being traumatizing. It was pretty easy for me. And at the time, my daughter was like a year old and I was like lifting her like three days after I got my boobs in. So I know I wasn't supposed to do that, but I did. And everything is fine. People ask me if I have, people, I get this question a lot. People ask if I still have feeling in my nipples, and I do. There's one area of my boob, like, right below my nipple, still on my boob, is like, I don't really have feeling on that area, but it doesn't bother me at all. I have no complaints except for, I feel like it hurts to wear a bra. Like, my boobs are heavy, so when I wear a bra, it hurts my shoulders. So, I like never wear a bra anymore, like ever. The only time I wear a bra is when I'm trying to be appropriate because I don't want my like nipples to be like, bing! But that's like for other people, like, I don't ever wear a bra for myself. I'll wear a bra if I want them like pushed up though. 99% of the time I don't wear a bra, I don't need it, and I like the way my boobs look in shirts without bras. So anyways, that's it. I hit all the questions that I wrote down. I had four pages of questions from you guys. I told you, I get a lot of questions about this type of stuff. So now you know. And I hope I answered all of them. I hope you guys heard everything you wanted to hear. I don't think I've had that much work done. I've never had my ass done. I've never had any other surgeries besides my boobs. And I've only had my lips and my chin and my nose barely ejected. So I really don't even think like I have that much crazy work. But maybe you guys will disagree. But anyways, I hope I answered all your questions. I hope you thought this video was informative and entertaining. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions regarding this topic, leave them in the comment section below. I'll answer them down there. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos from me. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!